Welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is uh, Take Two. That is American Issues, Take Two. And you'll see what we mean when we see American Issues. In any event, today we're going to talk about Putin and how his aggression is not limited to Ukraine. It's elsewhere. It's elsewhere in the Middle East, and it's elsewhere in Africa. You know, the press doesn't cover it that much. We don't hear that much about it, but little figments peek out at us, and articles come one at a time and suggesting that he's here, there, and everywhere. To, specifically to wit, a very interesting piece on Syria on 60 Minutes last weekend, um, and an article in the New York Times um, in about Chad, Chad in East Africa. So, wow, there's lots to discuss here. <music> Welcome to the show, Tim. And for, let's start with you, Tim. Um, you know, what in the world is going on, and why don't we hear about it? Um, you know, I guess I would add that uh, we, we have a lot of media coverage of the dysfunction in Congress and all the machinations among the Republicans in Congress and, and otherwise. But we don't hear about what's going on. We don't, I don't think there's enough coverage on Ukraine. But beyond Ukraine, we don't get any coverage about exactly what's, what's going on in the Middle East and Africa, and especially Russia's involvement. Why don't we hear about this? I just don't think the United States has put a lot of attention um, in Africa. Uh, it only becomes an issue when Russia forces its hands and um, we get a you know military conflict out of Africa and because it's it's been fueled and supported by Russia um, for years in the past. I mean, I'm thinking of, um, of the, the, the one that affected the United States the most, of course, was Cuba and the influence Russia had in Cuba and all of those decades of, of of financial support and military support uh, ended just because Russia ran out of money. Um, but it doesn't cost much to gain influence in these smaller African nations and simply to support the, the dictators of those nations with very little uh, capital, capital infusion. Um, usually it's military arms sales and, uh, and a guarantee that their regime will stay in power. Uh, that usually buys a whole lot of friendship and loyalty from these African nations because they're being run by um, dictators. Mm, that, that's a really good point. You know, Manfred, <clears throat> you know, why is Putin doing this? He's, he's setting the Wagner Group out all over Africa, and they are not really helping anybody. I think, they're do I think they're doing what Tim was talking about. They go in there and they promise existing autocrats and dictators um, to retain them in power. And that does not stabilize the country. It destabilizes the country. So if they're promising, you know, um, stabilization, if they're promising security to a given country, it never, ever works out that way. And the articles I've seen are consistent with that. Uh, furthermore, they, they take things. They take things for themselves. I mean, economic things, gold, diamonds, what have you, um, uh, crops. They take things for themselves and they take things for uh, Vladimir Putin. Um, so there's a benefit, but it's a not deniability kind of benefit because Putin denies that he's responsible for what the Wagner Group is doing. So my question is, um, you know, what what does he ultimately hope to achieve by by destabilizing uh, sub-Saharan Africa? And for that matter, we'll talk about it separately, the Middle East. I mean, whatever, however important these moves in Africa may be, they're all part of the grand imperial design of a megalomaniacal uh, dictator. I mean, that is part of Putin's folly. Uh, I do not think that uh, what we are talking about, what you are mentioned uh, with the involvement of the Wagner Group and other uh, mercenary uh, troops in Africa, is so important. I mean, what is important is what happens in the Ukraine. Uh, and that, I think, is destabilizing Russia. Uh, I mean, whatever happens now in the spring offensive in, in, uh, by the Ukraine in, in their country, uh, I think that it's more important for the stability of Russia uh, over the next uh, few months uh, than whatever is happening in in Africa. I find the African excursions 
uninteresting. <coughs> I, mean, I find it interesting what he is continuing to do in Syria, but even there, you know, uh, what does he think he will get by uh, helping possibly Erdogan uh, to fulfill his uh, imperial dream of reconstructing, you know, the Ottoman Empire. Uh, so both of them, Putin and Erdogan, are living in uh, a past that they want to recreate. And uh, sometimes nature is helping us, you know, to undermine their endeavors, their endeavors, like the earthquake, you know, in 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 Turkey. So I, I, I find, you know, these excursions into Africa uh, uninteresting. Well, let me it, see if I, mean, I, I can, would find it much more interesting to talk you. about China. Uh, China it, it, it moves into uh, Africa, I think, are um, much more successful because they have the resources. Russia doesn't have the resources. Let me see if I can interest you at least a little bit. Um, so a few months ago, there was a, uh, a motion in the, I think it was the General Assembly in, uh, in, the, in the UN to condemn Russia for invading Ukraine. Okay? A good part of Africa, if not most of Africa, voted against that resolution or abstained. Abstained. Abstained, or, or some of them didn't even show up. They didn't right. even abstain. Uh, and obviously, that was um, you know uh, uh, the result of uh, advocacy by by Russia, and Russia has uh, effectively uh, you know neutered the Security Council, and we saw that on television a few days ago. Uh, Lavrov was uh, really outrageous. But <clears throat> so what you know what's what's happening is our influence, uh, our 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 image in the world in in Africa and the Middle East, and for that matter, the countries that follow what goes on in China, or on behalf of China, um, we don't look so good. We look weak. And that's what they want. You know, don't, don't you agree with me, Manfred, that aside from the violence and the outrage happening in Ukraine, what Putin wants to do is play to the world. He wants to spread his misinformation, disinformation, his lies and propaganda, and change the truth. You know, flip it over the way Trump does. And <clears throat> this is in aid of that. And he's actually having an effect doing that, isn't he? I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure whether that uh, is the motivation. I think the motivation is really uh, the, his grandiose vision of uh, a reconstituted Russian Empire. Uh, and for that reason, what is happening uh, in Africa, he, it's, you know, in a way competing also with China. Uh, but China is more successful. If you want to uh, speak about competition, you know, it would not be Russia in Africa, it would be China in Africa. And, you know, whether the United States should go in there and, uh, you know, somehow copy the actions uh, of China. I don't know whether that makes sense either. I mean, we are living in a world, whether it's already bipolar, you know, American, China, or whether we should still add uh, Russia to it. I don't know. But I do not think we should look at this scenario that you have uh, painted there as a reason for the United States to become more involved in African uh, confrontations. I think it doesn't, I mean, you could say the same about Latin America. You could say the same about Southeast Asia. And I do not think, well, especially in Latin America, I mean, Brazil did not uh, support, even Lula has become president. He didn't uh, move against Putin uh, either. Well, that's true. And, and, and the same process is happening in Latin America, and so we should mention that. But, you know, Tim, you know what? <clears throat> Can we just stand by? Uh, in uh, Joe Biden's uh, announcement of his uh, candidacy you know, the other day, 
He didn't really talk much about Ukraine. He didn't talk at all about uh, about uh, Russia's efforts elsewhere. He didn't really talk much about the Middle East or Africa. Um, and so, I mean, are we going to like sit back wallflower style and watch this happen? Now, Manfred says, um, you know, um, contention that the U.S. You know, doesn't want to do contention and possibly violence. Um, but, you know, shouldn't we be doing something? We are turning into a non-entity in Africa. Well, I think we have an interest to do something in Africa. And <clears throat> I'll go to Manfred's um, case about how China did it. I remember 1994 when China's influence in Tanzania and all those countries in uh, East Africa, um, they started off with bicycles and rice, you know, humanitarian support for Africa and African nations. And then as time went on, they brought in their um, Chinese engineers to help um, reconstruct bridges or build new bridges, uh, infrastructure support. And then lo and behold, before you know it, uh, China now has mineral rights in all sorts of African nations. And what are those mineral rights for? Computer chip uh, production. And so there is a vast source of raw materials and minerals in Africa that uh, cannot be found anywhere else in the world. Or if, if so, it's you know, already stabilized in countries that you know the value of their, their, their raw materials, and they're gonna sell them at high market prices. Uh, recently, China was shown the door in the uh, Republic of Congo, thinking that they had a, you know, a corner market on, on, on the raw materials for computer chip manufacturing. Guess what? Congo sent them packing because they knew now the, the value of what they had in the, in the earth. Uh, so Russia may be doing the same thing, because computers is, you know, we only have so many raw materials to generate computer chips. And it's the United States' interest also to ingratiate themselves to African nations with economics um, enhancements and, and infrastructure support to be a competitor in Africa. So we can't afford to ignore Africa, uh, but at least we have to be, like China, um, a, a nation that can be as seen as a competitor and an economic partner. So, Manfred, just for a moment, I'd like to make you an advisor to the existing president, maybe the next one, <clears throat> and uh, ask you, you know, which, where should our focus be? There's two things happening here. One is, um, you know, the deterioration of security around Africa and the Middle East. I mean, it's, it's horrible. The 60-minute segment on, um, on what, um, what's his name, Assad was doing, bombing civilians, bombing hospitals so that wounded, maimed people could not get medical care. Uh, the doctors there are just, just astounded uh, with the lack of humanity. Um, you know, this is pretty bad stuff. That's really the ultimate lack of security. You can't even get fixed when you're broken. Um, but, you know, it's, it goes beyond that. It goes to what Tim was talking about. It ta it, it's about, um, you know, humanitarian help. It's about economic help. And so what if I made you, you know, an advisor, uh, what would you do about a given country that was being de destabilized? And everywhere the Wagner Group goes, you know, destabilization follows. And what would you do about a country where uh, Putin was making inroads on, on resources, on minerals and agriculture, uh, what have you? Um, I mean, he's really got both both ends working here. And it's all across Africa. And I suppose you could say it's all across the Middle East. But, but that's a different story because what he's doing there, and this is very relevant to our discussion, is he's being a statesman. He's creating new relationships between the Saudis and Iran, between Iran and Syria. He's making old enemies new friends. He's becoming a global statesman where 10 years ago he was nothing. <clears throat> it's quite remarkable what's happened there. So my question is, what, is, what tact does the U.S. take, if any? If you say we should turn our back on it, what's the result? Look, you just mentioned the rapprochement between Saudi Arabia and Iran. That was not launched by Russia. That was launched by the Chinese. Uh, so, you know, you have your image of Putin's power at this point and influence, I think is ex exaggerated. Um, and uh, I do not think uh, Biden should be uh, trying, you know, to copy uh, or to move against any of the 
interventions that uh, you connect with Putin. Okay, but what 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 should he do? What's the affirmative action that Biden should take? What's your advice to him? I mean, I my advice to him is do not become a copy of Putin. Uh, you know, be rational, be uh, smart, and pick you know your uh, your targets, but do not make the same mistakes that American presidents have made before. And I mean, and this, if they would follow Putin's moves and and have you know, empty American prisons and send them with Wagner, you know, to all over the world. I mean, that's crazy. Uh, I mean, you have to, you have to also see the madness, the political madness of Putin uh, moves. I mean, he, he is not uh, the super uh, man, you know, he cannot rely on uh, oil and gas you know, in order to uh, somehow keep his uh, messy regime in 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 place. Uh, I mean, Russia is not a very successful political, social, economic uh, empire. I mean, they are as economically, in, in terms of its industry, they are as... Uh, run down as they were when the Soviet Union collapsed in in 91. Uh, I mean, the only thing that uh, they have, you know, is oil and gas. But what does that mean? That does not, uh, that does not indicate that, that Russia is a successful political... So then wouldn't it be easy for the United States to help these countries? But we're not. Well, yes, but there might be limits to, to the help that the United States is capable of providing. Well, you mean uh, politically or economically? Economically. Um, politically, maybe they, they, they could do more, but I think there are limits to what the United States can do uh, at, this, at this point. Um, and I think you will see... You see it already now. You know the support for the for the military assistance for the Ukraine is becoming. Uh, Biden didn't, as mentioned, didn't talk about it, and that may become worse. You know because uh, the resources of the United States are limited. Also, you cannot take over. I mean, you cannot compete with the, you should not compete with the madness of uh, Putin. That's a really interesting way to put it. You should not compete with the madness of somebody who's out of his mind. But Tim, let me, let me go to you on this. Uh, <clears throat> you know, we've talked uh, through this discussion and before um, about uh, Putin's lack of resources. I mean, after all, he's still operating under sanctions and he's economically weak. His population is... Uh, um, gee, a third of the United States, is the, it's, um, it's, it's not really a strong country, as Manfred says. Um, how does, if at all, how does these operations in Africa and, the, and, Latin, and um, in Latin America also, and the Middle East, how do they help him? Uh, you can say he's mad and, and there's no good reason for it, but he must think there's something mm, that helps him. Uh, he must think there's something that helps him on his principle. Uh, project right now that is destroying Ukraine. What's well, so, yeah, he, he's already yeah. been helped by African nations. His influence has already uh, struck gold. Uh, he basically got a uh, disengagement of Af African nations to condemn him in Ukraine invasion. Uh, that's that has paid off very well for him. But you yeah, know, but look, uh, if you say that, then you should make the same argument against China and Brazil. And, and other uh, oh I do I, yeah, I, I mean but we're, I, looking I, at a, no, go ahead. we're looking at a sphere of influence that uh, the United States is woefully lacking and that is like I said China's been in Africa since the early 1990s I saw it with my own eyes um, and they've done very well in those African nations to well, ingratiate yes, themselves up, up to some point yeah you know, you're, well you're probably, let me throw one also, you know you have they have a lot they have created a lot of uh, hostility in the countries in which they exist. I mean, I when I was in South Africa, 
uh, a few years ago, uh, it was amazing to see how uh, the Russian, the Chinese embassy, you know, was like a fortress. Um, and how, uh, you know, in, in other African countries, uh, they are not using local uh, workers, you know, and do their jobs. They bring uh, Chinese uh, labor mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. groups. So what you have there is, on the one hand, they are successful. On the other hand, they are creating a very, very hostile uh, anti-Chinese sentiment as well. I mean, uh, that you had in with them with the united states uh, in the 50s and 60s anti-americanism you know was very very much a part you know of this uh, outreach that uh, jay is talking about uh, i think uh, the united states should not well they should okay. not copy the man let me go back to Putin. tim on that tim how much of that do you agree with um I, I agree with about 80% of what Manfred's saying. And the, I guess the 20% differential is we need to stay engaged in that with Africa and, and, and form yes. those relationships and partnerships. I remember Bill Clinton uh, forming a consortium of private businesses to invest strictly in the sub-Saharan uh, regions of Africa to, to spur economic growth, thereby keeping them out of the hands of Russia. Because if they're doing well economically, they won't have their hand out saying, please, uh, we'll take anything and everything and, and be your puppet government by doing so. So by, by the United States' interest of keeping Africa and the African nations healthy and vibrant as possible, um, we are doing great work by doing that. Uh, hmm. I think we've fallen off the mark. and We're not doing that so much right now. And um, I think we need to engage further. There's the 20% I don't agree with, uh, with Manfred. Let me, let me tell you about two, <laughs> thing, two issues that we covered over the past year or so. Uh, one of them was the cobalt in the Congo. Congo was rich with cobalt. And uh, the United States um, had a company, American company, that owned the cobalt mines in Congo. Um, but um, I guess um, the Chinese made an effort to buy uh, those mines, and the American company sold them. Now, all of a sudden, all the cobalt in this cobalt-rich country was in the hands of the Chinese. Beautiful move by the Chinese. But the government switched it around and, and incentivized or encouraged this American company to reverse the deal. And so the last I heard of that, and I, don't, I am not current on it, was that we, we did control the cobalt. So you have these very valuable resources. Cobalt is involved in batteries, right? It's very important resources, not that much of it in the world. The other thing I want to mention, and, and this is my question to really both of you, is, you know, a few days ago, we covered, um, we covered um, Ethiopia. Now, Ethiopia has water. Ethiopia is the source of the Blue Nile. Ethiopia controls agriculture in Egypt. Egypt is terrified that the building of a dam, a huge, big, biggest dam in Africa um, called the GERD, G-E-R-D, um, in Ethiopia is going to change its economy, its agriculture, everything for it. It's terrified of that. And, and it has threatened war against Ethiopia. Okay? At the same time, Ethiopia has, um, it has um, you know, a lack of security. It has, a lack, it has a lack of internal stability. And the Russians are there, and they're trying to foment this okay? for their own purposes. And maybe one of the principal purposes to answer my question earlier is to create problems, to create violence and disturbance um, because they think in some cases, maybe in many cases, that helps them. And so if there is a war um, between, you know, uh, uh, Ethiopia and Egypt, and there's a chance that might happen, um, you know, maybe that benefits Russia. And so maybe Russia is right in terms of the, the effort of creating, um, you know, disturbance and violence and civil war. Uh, in Ethiopia works in its favor. And it's so cheap to do that. You get the Wagner boys in there, and they can create a civil disturbance and a civil war in no time at all. And if that benefits, you know, Russia in terms of, you know, being the big player on the block as far as bringing Egypt within its influence, uh, gee whiz, that's pretty good because it can get resource from Egypt. 
Anyway, what I'm what I'm really asking you both is, isn't there a value for Russia in creating civil disturbance throughout Africa? And isn't that so cheap? You know, they may not have any money, but it doesn't cost much to create a civil war. No, it costs a lot. And I think you're exaggerating, you know, the power and the influence. I'm of only Russia. doing that to provoke you, man. Yeah, OK, you sound I mean, you sound as if you're talking about the Soviet Union, the superpower. You know, I mean, it's a, it's a tape from the 50s and 60s that you are uh, playing there. I think your your image of contemporary Russia, Putin's Russia, is uh, really that of a functioning functioning superpower, and that's not what Putin's Russia is. Putin's Russia has shown its weakness, and these Wagner people, uh, remember, he recruits all of his uh, troops uh, by emptying Russian prisons. Uh, their commitment, you know, is very, very questionable. And I do not think that this, these imperial, these imperial uh, moves that you are describing, you know, as very successful, they are neither successful nor there's any, there's any, uh, I think, political value overall connected with them. I think what you are talking really about a Russia that is this that is the Russia of Putin's dream. Well, I think there's that a reality really here, Manfred. But that doesn't you, know, you, you have seen the footage of Putin next to us. What's his name? Assad in Syria. And it's Putin's MiGs that are flying those missions to destroy Aleppo and every institution, every human structure uh, in, in uh, West uh, Syria. Yeah, and, he gets, it's quite, it's, and he's there, man. He's there. Right. He's, he's he's shaking hands with him. He's providing the planes, uh, the pilots, and the ammunition. Um, that that's not theoretical. That is real, and, yeah, and there's footage of it, and we know he's doing that. Right. I suggest to you, he he may be doing similar things in Africa. It's just that we're not seeing the footage. No, I'm 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 sorry. You know, that sounds a little bit conspiratorial. But I think the success, the success, uh, you know, of his intervention in Syria is somewhat questionable, also. And then you have this other uh, uh, guy, you know, the, the president of Turkey, uh, who really wants to bring Syria back into the Ottoman. Yeah, I mean, he wants to recreate the Ottoman Empire, and, and Syria was part of it for for centuries. Uh, so what you are having there. You know, our three madmen uh, fighting each other. Uh, and for that reason, you know, I find your vision of a success in that part of the world uh, as overrated as uh, your fears of what Putin may be capable of doing. Uh, okay, in, I'm not going to argue Africa. with you about it. I, let me say that I don't agree with <laughs> Uh, Tim, what about you? Where, where do you stand on this? Well, let me speak out both sides of my mouth, which I don't like to admit, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> and that is, um, I, I agree 99% with Manford. But at the same time, we saw evidence of Joe Biden going to Saudi Arabia to say, please don't produce, uh, please increase your production of oil. Uh, we need some help here on inflation values of uh, gasoline prices here at the pump in the United States. And what did what did Saudi Arabia do? They they didn't do that. They decreased because they have that relationship with Russia and they were influenced by Russia. And so they didn't take I mean, it was embarrassing to see the president of the United States go with his hat in hand and come back empty. Um, it was a bad moment for for visuals of the United States power and influence. Uh, he was shown the door. And that's a direct result of Jay to what you're saying is uh, Putin's influence. Uh, not only in Africa, but certainly with Saudi Arabia. Okay, well, I, we're almost out of time, so I think it's it's time to make uh, closing statements here. And I think uh, I would like to ask you to include in your closing statements, uh, you know, how all of this affects the world view of of the invasion of Ukraine, um, because um, it's not clear that people around Europe and elsewhere are as ardent to defend Ukraine today as they as they were before. 
Uh, there's a very interesting, you know, remember Mark Hamlin of Star Wars? He has, uh, yeah, he has, <laughs> a, he has a charitable program going on where people can contribute. The average person can contribute to buying drones for um, Ukraine, you know, little drones that do surveillance. And, and that is really very interesting. And it reminds me of when I sat on the neighborhood board here in Hawaii. And um, they, would, they would come to us and say, can you guys uh, spare a few bucks for pencils for the elementary schools? We don't, we don't have any pencils in the elementary school. And we hope that the members of the neighborhood board will help us with the pencils. You know, that's where we are now. And this is not a full-throated response. If it was before, it is, certainly isn't that now. And I suggest to you, and I like your comments on this, that, you know, this, this all the world is a stage notion that we are seeing play out in the media, not only in Russia, but elsewhere, um, does have an effect on the world view and participation in the defense of Ukraine. Manfred, you first. And the reason is I know you're going to disagree with me. No, I don't disagree with you. I, I think you uh, put your finger on uh, something that may become uh, really very, very dangerous uh, very soon, namely the lack of support for the Ukraine. At this point, I think, it in especially in Europe, it is not the case. I mean, looking at Germany, for example, uh, the delivery of tanks and, and weapons is going smoothly and even though you have uh, a loud opposition on the right and on the left uh, the greens are in the forefront of supporting uh, you know these deliveries and uh, even though macron you know is sometimes uh, trying to talk from both sides of his mouth uh, but he's still part of that also. And then, you know, you have the Scandinavians, uh, Finland, Sweden, you have the Baltic states. I mean, that is, for example, an issue that you should have mentioned when you are speaking about the power uh, of uh, Putin. That you have, uh, you know, recently, I think also in the, in the, in the secret papers, the discussions about within inside the Putin circle, of moving, you know, uh, to try to include the Baltic states again, you know, in uh, in in Russia, uh, the total reversal, you know, of uh, in a way the the collapse of the Soviet Union. I think that is a much more dangerous scenario than what you. Think. Oh no, we've we've covered that before. We've covered yeah, it for I mean, the, the, now, ba yeah, the Baltics we, and the Balkans as well. Yeah, well, well, not not the Balkan, but I mean, uh, Mold Moldova, uh, Georgia. Uh, so what you have that I find dangerous uh, more, and uh, it is possible, you know, that there are some of these uh, initiatives that seem to be discussed in the inner circle of power in Russia. Uh, that they will try to do that, but I do not think they will be successful in that regard. I think what they are really doing, what all of it is doing to Russia is the self-destruction of a once. Okay, we're waiting. We're waiting for that. We're waiting for yes, the self-destruction. I think uh, it is really uh, self. Russia is in the process of getting destroyed from within. Okay, let's, let's uh, go to Tim. Tim, can you put all of this together and, uh, and try to make some summary that wraps around all of it. Oh, thanks, Jay. <laughs> um, you know, if you think about it, the sanctions that have been imposed by the EU and, and the United States should have had a real big impact to Russia and uh, economically squeezed them. But that really hasn't happened. And, and maybe this goes to your point, Jay, is the influence of Putin on all these other nations to help him skirt uh, economic sanctions of Russia. I th I'm thinking of Modi of India. I'm thinking of Erdogan of Turkey. I'm thinking of Iran and certainly a direct military capability of um, drone technology that has helped Russia. I'm thinking, of course, then of the African nations and let's not forget other parts of the Middle East. So I think your point's well-founded. I, I think that his influence 
as a statesman is certainly beyond what I think would have been capable. He would have been capable of. Uh, but I also agree with Manfred is that the time, you know, the clock is ticking and the resource issue is going to finally end up on the front doorstep of Russia and his power will wane um, depending on whether he has a health issue or not. Um, I think Putin's days are numbered, but up to now he's he's negotiated fairly well with all these other nations to help them skirt the uh, United States and EU sanctions. OK, and I'll add my thought. And um, I mean, I, I feel pretty strongly that the United States should not be isolationist or nationalist. The United States should have a worldview, a Marshall Plan view, if you like, um, a post-World War II, you know, um, liberal world order view. And I think we have lost that. Uh, Trump did a lot to, to pull it out from under us and uh, out from under Europe. Hopefully, Biden can continue and succeed in his efforts now and in his next term if he gets one uh and and um you know um, return to a more uh, international view of things thank you thank you manfred thank you for coming on we always appreciate your thoughts even if you disagree with me on so many points that's okay <laughs> i want that i want point counterpoint and tim thank you so much for agreeing with me at least in small part <laughs> <laughs> Aloha, you guys. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook. Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.